Amen. My grandmother used to say to me, when I started getting, you know, too big for my britches, when I started acting out in different ways, she would say, young man, be careful that you don't bite off more than you can chew. How many of you have heard that expression? It's an important expression. I mean, when you and I start to get cocky and and we start getting out of the place where we belong, well, we start to do foolish things and there's more danger than we might realize. Or another way of saying that is, be careful, you've got a tiger by the tail. Well, there you go. Um, Do you think he's got a problem? Yeah, you know, when you and I look at that picture, we've been so conditioned, so city-eyed, um, that, that we think that tigers are like little putty cats. Um, really, you know, Hollywood has made tigers, bears, lions, oh my, um, defanged them, taken the claws out of them. But the Bible doesn't describe it that way. All through the scriptures, we know that God created predators and there's a place in God's creation for them. But there is a constant warning. For example, Satan is a roaring lion seeking whom he may cuddle or devour. Devour. It talks about the false prophets. It says, beware of wolves in what? Sheep's clothing. So they camouflage themselves. Well, tigers are powerful creatures. I, I, again, I, I just want you to understand the contrast. If, if India right now has the largest population of tigers, roughly 3,000 of them. And if you live in the city in India, uh, tigers are not really something that's on your mind. They don't live there. They're not a threat. Hollywood, tigers are not a threat. But let me bring you out here. Let me bring you to the mountains. Let me bring you out to the, to the villages on the outside. There was one tiger that killed 435 people and ate them. How many of you realize that tigers are not just little putty cats? And I want you to think about that as we go through this passage because here's the propensity is that people just like you and me, and the propensity is for us and our children to lower God, to, 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 to tame God, if you will, to defang him, to, 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 to t- take away his claws. I mean, do you know what the Bible says? It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. You know, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord uh, leads us to righteousness. The fear of the Lord is a good and healthy thing. And yet, what we see is, is that we defang God and make him a little putty cat and we exalt ourselves. This has always been a problem all through history. You might remember the prophet Isaiah. He is sent to the people of Israel, the people of God. They were, had done that in that generation and he's describing their, how uh, it's called the seven woes. It's, it's, it's the breakdown of their nation. And let me just show you one of the verses in chapter five of Isaiah. It says, woe to those who call evil good. Now, oive is the the Hebrew expression. It's used multiple times in the chapter. And it just simply means that I'm being undone. I'm being unraveled. There's a divine judgment against me. Again, he's warning. There are real teeth. There are real fangs. You don't want to dethrone God. You want to acknowledge that he's high, exalted, and lifted up, and that we are his servants. It's not the other way around. Now, yes, in Jesus Christ, we can become the children of God, his little ones, his technons. That's great. And that's where we want to find ourselves. But friends, hear me. You don't want to take God on. Listen to this passage. Whoa, divine judgment to those who call evil good and good what? Evil. Good, evil. Notice it goes on. Who substitute dark for light and light for darkness. Again, you read through the scriptures on and on, the contrast there, light and darkness. Uh, one is holy, one is unholy. And so um, God, it says God is light and in him there is no darkness at all in First John. And so light is representative of righteousness. And so again, they come along and they, they pull one of these scenarios and they substitute. Goes on and describes bitterness who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe, again, second time it's used. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. In other words, they can really put the spin to it. Friends, beware 
These people have a tiger by the tail. Woe unto them. Y'all, you understand the implication of that verse? It was a warning back to Israel 700 years before Jesus. It's still the warning today when people do that. Now this week, um, Senator um, Warren, now you got to understand, senators are hugely powerful people in our country, and rightly so. We have three branches of government, the executive branch, legislative branch, and the judicial branch. The legislative branch is the most powerful branch. Most of us don't think that way, but if you think about it, they they make the laws and control the purse strings. So the House and uh, the Senate, they work in junction, creating laws, controlling the purse, or they're supposed to work this way anyways. And And then the executive office execute those laws Um, as they are written, or that's how it's supposed to happen. And then you remember the courts um, analyze what's happening, an infraction of those laws. So senators are very important. Keep in mind that woe passage you just saw was given to kings and those who are in authority in the land of Israel and all of the people. Now, um, uh, Senator Warren this last week said something, and I want you just to pause and to think with me. Is this a sleight of hands? Is this clever in our own eyes? Think about this. In Massachusetts right now, those crisis pregnancy centers that are there to fool people who are looking for pregnancy termination help outnumber true abortion clinics by three to one. We need to shut them down here in Massachusetts and we need to shut them down all around the country. You should not be able to torture a pregnant person like that. Shut them down. Three to one. Horrible. Shut them down. Why? Because you shouldn't be able to torture a pregnant person. But we can kill their child. I want you to look at this passage again. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. And this principle is found everywhere in the Bible. The book of Proverbs is a book of principles. Again, this isn't abstract information in the Bible, friends. This is for us to understand. Proverbs 15, 9 says this, The way of the wicked is an abomination to whom? To the Lord. It doesn't matter your skin tone. It doesn't matter your language. It doesn't matter the time or the season that you're born. It doesn't matter the continent you're born on. The reality is, is that anything that is wicked, well, how would you know what is wicked is? You have to acknowledge there's a God and he's absolutely whole and he tells us right and wrong so that we get that right. But anything that is wicked is an abomination to the Lord. Conjunction of contrast. But he loves, the Lord loves, those who pursue righteousness. Again, it doesn't matter your language, doesn't matter what continent you're on, doesn't matter the time of season you're born. There's the contrast. God is, a, uh, is opposed to the wicked and he gives grace to those who are seeking him. 